So Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your heart for the church and we just uh, open our ears and our, open our hearts to receive from you, Spirit of the living God, poor revelation that your church would be uh, all that you called her to be in Jesus name. Remove, uh, remove, um, remove things that are not true, Father God. Remove untruths and help us to be founded in your truth in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so um, the, the welcome to, to lesson six, where we'll be talking about uh, prophets and if we've got time, types of apostles. But uh, in the last lesson, I was saying that, um, as I explained the different types, the different categories of the prophets uh, that we had, those who lead worship, those who lead prayer, those who directional, uh, those who have different, um, different areas, different remits, either the nations or the church, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, um, not all prophets are predictive prophets. So uh, Luke chapter two, we read about Anna, the prophetess. She was described as a prophetess. She didn't depart from the temple day and night. She worshiped God, that was her assignment. And so th there's, there's some of us that are called to just spend loads of time in the presence of God. We don't always have a predictive, uh, a predictive prophetic word that may not be that person's ministry. So you may have a calling to just spend uh, seven, eight hours a day uh, in prayer that's that's prophetic ministry that's prophetic ministry and then um the other thing that i wanted to touch on is um oh well this you know when we talk of false prophet what's a false prophet a false prophet isn't somebody whose prophecies in, in the New Testament, now in the Old Testament, false prophets, someone has got it wrong. And that's because the whole system of download of the prophetic word, you were, the prophets were hearing the very words of God. But the prophets in the New Testament, it comes to our imagination. We process what we feel God is saying and we offer it, we offer the interpretations and the applications. So the whole process of, of receiving from God for the new, in the New Testament is different from the Old. So in the New Testament, a false prophet isn't one who gets it wrong but one whose motive or character or source by which they receive the revelation is polluted or is from the enemy now th this is simply clear because in the, in the new testament we're told to weigh prophecy so if you weigh prophecy then there's indication there's a there's an expectation that it's not always going to be right you know we, we we in acts chapter 16 there was this girl with the spirit of divination who was prophesying a true word about paul these are servants of the most high who are showing you the way of salvation and that was a spot-on word but she was a false prophet why was she false because the source from which she received the word was of the enemy and the once, once it's from the enemy it's just not gonna go not, just not good so if you if you've received words uh, from your horoscope chart or from some uh, some mystic or something and the source is wrong even though their words may be right you need to reject it and cut that off from your life because the never the devil never gives anything for free there's a price tag okay so if the source is wrong you know it's wrong tear it up and repent before the lord okay so what else makes a false prophet if the character is consistently wrong. So somebody is consistently living in sin. You, they're, they're false prophets. If the motive is wrong, is if you you know we, we need to weigh the prophetic word. So when a when a prophet is giving incredible words of knowledge about your date of birth, your bank account, etc. Et et so to what aim? What what's the end game? If the end game is is to be able to manipulate the people or to be able to take money from the people, that's a false prophet. Jesus used words of knowledge to draw people to himself. So with the woman at the well, you know, you go call your husband. You've got five husbands. Why? He was bringing her to a place of repentance. Others use words of knowledge for healing to raise, cause there to be an increase in the level of faith that people will be healed. But if the word of knowledge is only used to manipulate and to appear like a star, then that's, that's, that's a false prophet. The, the gifts are used, they are given to us, not as play, not as, to, not as toys to make us look like, like superstars, but the gifts are given so that the, that the body of Christ would be edified if the people aren't saved, that they would get saved and to bring people to repentance. So a, a, a prophet is false again, you know, uh, just going through the list, you know, if it's obviously it's, it's from the wrong source. Um, secondly, if consistent, bad character. Thirdly, if it's for manipulation, 
and, uh, and, and for greed and for gain. Father, we, we, we ask that you would put a stop to such uh, moves of false prophets in the nations right now in Jesus' name. Okay, so how do you know when the source is wrong? Well, there are certain clues that you can look, if the character of Christ, the humility of Christ isn't there, then you know the source is wrong. But also from the discerning of spirits, you pick it that there's something wrong by the operation of the discerning of the spirits. Now, this is why the, the, the apostolic is, is needed. But before I just go on to the apostolic, we, we, must, we must not give the, the ground of prophets and prophetic ministry to the enemy. We mustn't. There's a battle going on for it. And prophets were given. Jesus took of himself. He's a prophet. He said, you know, gifts were given to men. And he gave prophets because he knows we need them. You see, there are levels of manifestation manifestations of the glory of God that are coming to the body of Christ, which only the prophets can take us there. Are you with me? We may be great pastors, loving people, great teachers, teaching the nuggets of the word, but they are manifestations of the glory of God, of the manifestation of God that will cover the earth, that will cover nations and its prophets who know how to pray us there. They know how to lead us there. They know how to guide us there. So we need to really wage war for the genuine prophetic ministry to come up and no better way than to begin to teach it. But there's, a, there's another gift that comes alongside the prophet, which also helps to, to, to increase the, the, the magnitude of the demonstrations of the, of the supernatural. And that's, that's the gift of the that's the gift of the apostle so uh, i remember some years back there were there was a particular city in, in in northern england that was being ravaged by by prophets who were who were false prophets and there was no apostle or apostolic company in that city that was strong or mature enough to be able to withstand them and resist them so wherever you have the prophetic you also need the apostolic and in our criteria of affirming people who are prophets in the in the iper you know that, that one leads we ask them do you have a link with an apostle? You see, the, 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 the remit of the pastor, the pastor is the sheep. He wants to protect the sheep. The, the, the teacher is the word of God. The evangelist is the souls. But they, they are not specialized in terms of what is going on in the atmosphere or operating in the discerning of spirits to be able to check whether what the prophet is doing is, 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 is right or wrong. And that's why the apostles and the apostolic is needed to bring balance and to bring uh, correction where, where it's needed and to be able to flow with what the prophet is bringing. You see, we, we, we don't want to war in, in darkness. We don't want to war in the dark. We want to war with wisdom and when the prophet is releasing words it is the apostolic that are able to take what the prophet is saying weigh it and as much as there's truth in it begin to build with it so paul described himself as a wise master builder he understood the flow of the spirit so just like you have um, a pastor teacher working together and somebody who's a pastor can often teach somebody who can teach can often pastor so also you have the, the the pair of the apostle prophet the apostle charged with building charged with wisdom the prophet with the flow of the spirit and the part and the apostle making sure that the flow of the spirit continues so you have the apostle prophet so there is in in the in the move of god today you know going going back to that the charismatic move was championed by the twins of the pastor teacher the apostolic prophetic movement will be championed by the twins of the apostle prophet together working with the pastor teacher and when you have the apostle prophet working properly and you have the pastor teacher working properly that is an ideal scenario for the evangelist to flourish you know sometimes evangelists get 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 frustrated with with just one type of church government which terms not to understand their heart but when you have the apostle prophet working and the prophet teacher working together then the evangelist also kicks in and the harvest is reaped and uh, before i go on to the apostles which i may leave leave for the next lesson you know in 1 corinthians 12 28 paul says this god has set some in the church first apostles then prophets then pastors teachers administrators helps tongues etc etc so the way god has designed it for the church to move on the apostle needs to be operating first it's not about seniority it's about the way you operate so i like to use the analogy of when you're building a house when you're building a house the first person on the scene at the land isn't the plumber it isn't the bricklayer it isn't the electrician the first person 
you know, after the, after the surveyor, the first person is the architect. What is the design to be built? When the architect is coming, so the, the apostle is the architect receiving the heavenly blueprint saying, this is what is the vision of God for this particular church, for this particular nation, for this particular city. And the, the, the prophet is working hand in hand with them. And then the pastors, teachers, and all work together. But the apostle must be given their role and the prophet must also be given their, their place. Father God, we pray for the unity of the body of Christ, that Lord, thank you for bringing to pass in our lifetime this great upper prophetic movement for to your glory and to your praise. See you in just a little while. God bless you.